Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to discuss transformations of functions. Let's go ahead and do an example. We have to sketch a graph of f of x equals negative x squared plus 9. Let's go ahead and work through it. Solution. So when you see a problem like this, the first thing you should think about is the graph of x squared. So mentally, or maybe on paper, you should draw a rough sketch of y equals x squared. The graph of y equals x squared looks roughly like this. It has the general shape of a u, called a parabola. So because we have a negative sign in front of the x squared, what that does is it reflects it across the x-axis. So if we were to look at the graph of negative x squared, it would look roughly like this, an upside down u where this here is the x-axis and this here is the y-axis. And because we're adding 9 to the actual function, we're going to go up by 9. So we're going to take this upside down u and then just go up by 9 units. So let's go ahead and sketch the final graph here. We have the y-axis, we have the x-axis, so this is x, this is y, and we're basically taking this upside down u and going up nine units. So I'm not going to draw this to scale. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a nine here like this because we know that's where it starts. And then it just goes straight down like this. And it goes down like this. Now, you might be wondering, do you have to find the x-intercepts? I think, sure, why not? They're pretty easy to find. Find the x-intercepts, you basically just set it equal to zero. So negative x squared plus nine equals zero. Then you could subtract nine. So you get negative x squared equals negative nine. So x squared equals nine. And then when you take the square root here, you do get a plus or minus. So you just get plus or minus three. There's a three here and there's a negative three here. At the same time, all of this work isn't really necessary because you can kind of look at it and see if you plug in three, you're gonna get negative three squared plus nine. You're gonna get negative nine plus nine. If you plug in negative 3, you're also going to get negative 9 plus 9, which in both cases is 0. So plugging in 3 or negative 3 is going to give you 0. We used a couple things in this problem that you might not remember, so I'm just going to briefly refresh your memory before we do another example. So right here at the beginning, we had y equals x squared. And I mentioned that if you have a negative sign in front of the x squared, it means you reflect it across the x-axis. So in general, if you have a minus sign in front of your function, you're going to reflect across the x-axis. I'm, I'm going to show you a trick for memorizing this, which is super powerful. And if you have a minus sign in front of the x, you reflect across the y-axis. So here's the trick. Recall that y is equal to f of x. So when you have a negative in front of the y, you reflect across the other one, across the x-axis. When you have a negative in front of the x, you reflect across the other one, the y-axis. As far as this here with the up 9, well, whenever you add a number to the function, you go up. So If you have f of x plus c, you're going to go up c units. You have f of x minus c, you're going to go down c units. And there's other transformations that we can do with functions, but these are the specific ones we used in this example. Let's go ahead and do another example of something a little bit different. In this example, the directions are to sketch f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3. Let's go ahead and work through this one solution. As before, you want to think about what function it is that you're going to be working with. So in this case, it's the absolute value of x. So if we let y equal the absolute value of x, we can think about the graph. And the graph of the absolute value of x, pretty simple, it just looks like a v, like this. Okay, so this time we're subtracting three from the x. So whenever you subtract from the x, it's right. So we're gonna go right three. So if you subtract from your x, you go right. If you add to your x, you go left. We're going to take this graph of the absolute value and we're going to shift it to the right by 3. Here's the y-axis. 
here's the x-axis, so x, y. And you basically take this point here at the origin and you just go right three tick marks. So one, two, three, put a dot. And then you draw your V. Boom, there it is. There's our beautiful V. I might be wondering, hey, wait a minute, it crossed the y-axis. Should I find the y-intercept? Sure, why not? So to find the y-intercept, you always just plug in zero into your function. So it'll be f of zero equals the absolute value of zero minus three. f of zero is equal to the absolute value of minus three, which is three. And then you just maybe label it on the graph by putting a three. So whenever you subtract from the x, you go right. If you add to the x, you go left. Let me just recall that for you, refresh your memory. If you have f of x plus c, you're adding to the x, so you go left. If you have f of x minus c, you're subtracting from the x, so you go right. And if you add it to the function, you go up. If you subtract it from the function, you go down. Let's go ahead and do one more example. In our last example, we are going to sketch the graph of f of x equal to square root of minus x. Let's go ahead and work through this one, solution. So in this case, the function that we're working with is the square root function. So y is equal to the square root of x. And so this graph is also pretty simple looking. Here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. And the graph looks something like this. It starts at 0, 0, and it just goes to the right like this. And it does keep going up forever, it just grows very slowly. So whenever you have a negative in front of the x, you reflect across the other axis. In this case, we're going to reflect across the y-axis. Remember the trick. If the negative's in front of the x, you reflect across the y. If the negative's in front of the y, you reflect across the x. In this case, the negative is in front of the x, so we reflect across the y-axis. We're basically going to have a graph that looks like this dotted line. I'm going to go ahead and draw it again over here. So here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. The x and y. And then you just put your dot at the origin, 0, 0, and then you draw your reflected square root function like that. So pretty simple. Hopefully you've learned some math in this video, and if you have, make sure to check out more videos on Chegg. Until next time, good luck.